Dr. John McDougall, an icon in the vegan community, hasn't been doing so well lately. To say he went off the rails in his recent conversation with John Duyard is an understatement. John Duyard is a holistic medicine practitioner that has similar ideas in the context of a plant-based diet and a vegan diet being what is optimal for health. Dr. McDougall is most well known for his book, The Starch Solution, and has always advocated a heavily potato, grain, quinoa, just high starch consumption diet with some fruits and vegetables. He worked for 16 years at a Seventh-day Adventist hospital, a religion known for promoting a vegetarian diet. Let's take a look at old Dr. McDougall back in the day. There's a diet that best supports human health, and that diet is centered around starch, like rice or potatoes, or sweet potatoes, corn, taro, with vegetables and fruits. The health trend in America's diet is to replace beef with fish. But consider these foods have nutritional characteristics that are very similar. They're all muscle. Basically, we're talking about the muscle of a cow, a pig, a chicken, or a fish. They're high in fat and or high in protein. They're low in fiber, contain no carbohydrate, and they're highly contaminated because they're high on the food chain. And one thing that will really surprise you is they all are very high in cholesterol. All muscle meat is contaminated because it's high on the food chain. I can't even address this because that would give it some sort of credibility. We know that not all meat is contaminated and that there are many things that aren't high on the food chain. This is typical vegan fear-mongering. It's consistent with the appeal to authority that cholesterol is bad, fat is bad, carbohydrates from whole grains and fiber are so good for you. But you know what? Carbohydrates and fiber are aren't necessary nutrients. Saturated fat and cholesterol are. Are you telling me now what I'm responding to when I eat is hunger that is exhibited by the fact my stomach isn't full? That's right. The way you satisfy your hunger primarily is by filling up your stomach. And so that's what you want to accomplish at every meal is to fill up your stomach. He also had no understanding that different macronutrients satiate the body in different ways, basing it entirely on food volume. He could have simply said, filling your stomach up with water is better and we should starve to death. It doesn't make any sense. When we first talked about doing a segment for Christian Lifestyle Magazine on how to eat healthfully in restaurants, they asked me which restaurant I'd like to use. And when I told them, they were really surprised. You see, this is not the kind of restaurant one normally thinks of when they want to eat a vegetarian diet. But just between you and me, I like to eat in places like this and let me show you why. I'd like to have baked potato, no butter, no sour cream. I want steamed vegetables, again, hold the butter, rice pilaf, and I'd like the salad bar. Now, does the soup come with the salad bar? Yes, as a matter of fact, the pasta bar and soup bar comes with the entire fresh fruit and salad bar. No, it wasn't that easy. Did anybody else catch that? Christian Lifestyle Magazine? Religious affiliation really is the only explanation for the ridiculousness that is about to follow. I'd like to have a Whopper. Now, you say I can have it my way, right? Yeah. All right, I want a veggie Whopper, and that means no meat. Okay, I'd like to have lettuce, tomatoes, onions, pickles, a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mustard, and no mayonnaise. And I'd also like to have one of your garden salads with your low-calorie dressing. I'd like to have a baked potato with broccoli, but no cheese. And um, I'd like to have the salad bar with lemon wedges. And how about a glass of water? Good times, great taste, and good health at McDonald's. Let me show you how. I'd like to have a garden salad, but I want you to leave off all the cheese and the egg. And I'd also like to have the light vinaigrette dressing. 
The garden salad contains 112 calories and 107 milligrams of cholesterol. By eliminating the eggs and cheese, you reduce the calories to less than 50, and you eliminate all the cholesterol. After all, your health deserves a break today. What's so funny about this is that the people in the comments are sucking on this thick 10-inch cucumber dick like it's the best tasting thing on the planet. When you have the truth, you never have to change your story. He was ahead of his time and still is. But hey, I'm sure these people are enjoying their nutritious and tasty starch-based diet. Be sure and read the labels first. I really like spice in my food. Therefore, I stopped by the barbecue sauce and the steak sauce section. You gotta make sure there are no oils in these items either. I really like these things. And what do I do with all these tasty sauces? I don't put them on steak. No, I put them on oil-free potatoes. Oh yeah, don't mind me. <laughs> Just like all the other vegans, he has to put a hundred ingredients on his food to choke it down. Cereals with whole grains and no sugars are easy to find in a supermarket, but what do you put on them? Well, how about uh, some apple juice? I'm serious. Try it. Whole grains with no sugar and puts apple juice in his... I can't make this up, guys. I'm honestly confused why the cameraman didn't put his camera down and walk out with the producer on the spot. Is this some sort of satire comedy? I like Wasa products, and I looked at all five of their crisp breads and found them to be of natural ingredients. And all were oil-free, except for the one that I expected to be healthiest, and that's the Fiber Plus variety. It has oil. If you want to eat oil-free, it just shows you you can't take things for granted. The idea of oil-free comes from Dr. Caldwell Esselstein, one of the founding Seventh-day Adventists. So it's safe to say the reason is clear why Dr. McDougall is such a fan of this starch-based diet. Let's see what years of this leads to. Hi, I'm Dr. John Yard, and welcome to LifeSpot.com, where we prove the ancient medical wisdom of Ayurveda with modern science. I couldn't pinpoint who this guy looked like. Initially, I thought it was Hellraiser. Then I thought it was Two-Face. Uh, but I, I think I finally landed on Ghost Rider. Uh, let me know who you guys think he looks like down below in the comments. And and guys, I know, I don't mean to make personal attacks here, but the guy is following a plant-based diet. That's why he looks like this. It's all fair game. And today, we have a very special guest, um, a, a, a mentor of mine. Um, one of his first books, The McDougal Plan, Dr. John McDougal, one of the pioneers in, in, in vegetarian, vegan diets. Um, my mom's a fan. My family's a fan. I've read his books for decades now. Uh, I am truly honored to have him as our guest. There's, there's very few people on the planet that have been preaching the exact same message for 40 years. And Dr. John McDougall is here to share that information with us. Very few people preaching that information for 40 years is the entire USDA Dietary Guidelines very few people. I'm going to say a couple of sentences many times during this presentation, which are will make the discussion unarguable. And the sentence and the statement I want to make to you is that all large, successful populations of people throughout all of verifiable history have consumed the bulk of their calories from starch. That's 99.99% of people that have ever lived on this planet have obtained their, the bulk of their calories from corn, potatoes, rice, sweet potatoes, etc. Examples being the Aztecs and the Mayans, which are known as the people of the corn from Central America, the Incas who lived on potatoes and quinoa. When you think of Asians, you think of 2 billion people with 90% of their diet white rice. Starch-based diets have been the diets of human beings. We are starch eaters, starch abhorrers, starchitarians. Until you understand this, you will fail. You will not have control. And I'm going to say that again and again and again, and you will never have anybody who can argue with 100 million years of data. Ha! 100 million years of data? Okay, okay. I, I thought he was joking, but he actually wasn't. 
considering the Neolithic revolution of agriculture started 12,000 years ago and harvesting of certain foods like corn, potatoes, and rice are only several thousand years old, you might want to double check that data, buddy boyo. That's not true. Okay, I have read the research. I have read the research. We yes. have research on Neanderthals all across Europe that shows that they were star cheaters. Neanderthals from 40,000 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Let me, let no. Me ask you a question, though. Let me there ask are you. not studies out there. There is. There are studies that go back to the, the, to the Christian Bible that show that we are star cheaters. Daniel took his men who were sick and visiting in another kingdom, and he asked the gatekeeper to keep the men on a vegetarian diet. Daniel in the Bible did, 2,600 years ago. The first controlled trial on diet that was done, at the end of 10 days, they declared the men who stayed on the pulseless vegetables, starches, and water were much healthier than the king, people, the men who ate the king's diet. So we have, have had controlled trials for over 2,600 years that have clearly shown that we are star cheaters. 90% of our calories have come from starch in almost all populations. I don't know why this guy, John Duyard, would even post this interview. The only explanation is that he is out of touch with reality. This is wacko daco stuff. From the misinterpreting studies to the Bible reference, uh, McDougal here is just lying and making up references. And, you know, clearly uh, the guy isn't 100%. How could he not see this? The problem I had when I, and the reason I was fired from the vegan conference in Berkeley, California in 2017, I want you to notice that half the people who stood up who said they were vegan were overweight or obese. They, those fat vegans, Half the population of vegans can't convey their message because of the way they personally appear. Right. Get real, folks. We have a world to save, and you're not doing it looking sick and fat. Can you do it looking like a rotting ghoul? It's absurd how he's making fun of fat vegans based on his own interest in promoting a plant-based lifestyle. There are plenty of insulin resistant people and people with various metabolic issues that would get fat even if they weren't eating vegan junk foods. So now to be 100% vegan, you do agree that we have to supplement. We have to supplement with omega 3s and, and B12. No. no, yes. No, yes. Okay, which omega is. Three, omega 3, well, you asked me two questions. You asked me omega 3, you asked me B12. The answer is no and yes. Okay. Okay. On omega threes, omega threes are made by plants only. Only plants can desaturate at the carbon three and carbon six position, which right. are the two essential fats. No animal can do that. No fish can do that. No cow can do that, etc. So, how do you get omega three fats? You get them from plants. How does a fish get the omega three fat? It eats algae or seaweed. It cannot make omega three fats. Why not go to the original source, the plants? They're loaded with omega-3 fats. But hey, Mr. McDougal, you are not a fish or a cow. Maybe if you had some omega-3, you wouldn't have a plant demon inside of you controlling your thoughts. You have a risk of B12 deficiency. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I err on the side of offering people B12 supplementation. Maybe there's a risk of one in a million. We got a real nutter here, boys. Mr. McDougal thinks you can only suffer from B12 issues if you develop some sort of rare disease as a result. Yeah, no big deal that 70% of vegans' brains are rotting away due to lack of vitamin B12. Some of the longevity research does point to that if you eat two servings of fish per week and a 90% whole food, non-processed, plant-based diet, you're going to be right in, the, in, in that place of getting your omega-3s and getting your B12. From we just talked about the omega-3s. We just talked about the B12s. Don't bring that up again. That's stupid. Do you agree that, that a 10% animal, animal-based diet would be a healthy diet? Well, it would be as good as a 10% uh, uh, M&M diet or Babe Ruth bar diet or uh, popsicle diet. 
In other words, in, in, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. In other uh, words, in other words, uh, chocolate candy is 50% fat. A good, uh, a lean steak is 50% fat. Right. So they're basically the same. They are treats intended for special occasions like Halloween and Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving. He doesn't want to acknowledge any ideas outside of his own. Also, saying that M&Ms are the same as a steak is confirmation of his complete nut job status. Don't look at their words. Don't listen to their words. Let's see what they look like. They look like they're dying. All of his arguments against any contradictory research are saying that it's funded by some sort of industry or he attacks the person saying they're fat, unhealthy, obese. <laughs> Yet here we have Dr. Dougal here in his corpse of a Halloween costume. You and I, and I do mean you, as an educator, have a responsibility to tell the truth without diluting the message just because we happen to have maintained and retained bad habits ourselves, or we have some financial interest in doing the wrong thing. Mr. McDougal, how are those 12 best-selling New York Times books doing? That is a very lovely waterfront house in the background. You must teach them the truth. And that is the human being is designed as a starch eater with fruits and vegetables and animal foods and free oils are poisons, period. And how much poison you want to eat? It's up to you. I don't care. I really don't care. Except for the fact that you are destroying my grandchildren's future. That bothers me a lot. You mean their trust fund isn't big enough yet from peddling your diet books that cause brain damage? And when, you, when someone like me is not nearly as sophisticated um, you know, in reading these studies as you are, because you've written a lot of them, Oh, Dr. Dougal, let me take that flaccid dry can suck on it. <laughs> Guys, I am losing my mind. I can't believe this. This guy is just choking down that white plant juice coming out of Dr. Dougal. I, I really don't know what to say here. This is, this is too much for me. <laughs> we would love to take you in and lock you up and brainwash you for a whole 10 days. Now that he has officially lost his mind, I feel like his true inner thoughts are coming out. Vegans are going to go about this in two ways. One group of vegans are going to say, hey, the guy's not 100%, uh, but his work in the past is great. And other people are going to still praise this guy as if his word is gospel. And I think that would be a mistake. It would discredit the vegan movement. But either way, I don't think we have to be negative about Dr. McDougal here. I think what we need to do is be positive, steer people away. It's unfortunate that it has to manifest itself in this way, in this poor man. Uh, the vegan movement will collapse in the future. We don't have to personally insult or degrade people to do that. The vegan diet is inherently deficient in nutrients. It is not sustainable. It will make people sick, infertile, and in this case, a lot of neurocognitive issues are associated with lack of fat and cholesterol in the diet. Uh, overall, guys, please take a positive message from this. I think the best thing moving forward here is to start a supplement vegan movement. If these vegans are so irrational that they will literally take themselves to the grave, we have to really push B12 supplements, algae supplements. We have to make sure these vegans aren't afraid of consuming plant-based fats, making sure there's a minimum amount of fats and maybe even oils consumed every day as a minimal bodily functional requirement. Uh, that, that's all I really have to say, guys. Uh, I mean, if, if they were willing to eat bivalves, mollusks, clams, whatever, that's a whole different story. But I think the supplements are a great first step. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me, just check out some of the videos at the end here. I'll post a bunch of related stuff, such as the Blue Zones video that I did a couple months back. If you guys do want to see the original interview with Dr. McDougal or the earlier clips from when McDougal was a little bit younger, all of that stuff is down in the description below. You guys enjoy the rest of the weekend.